and welcome to Centaurian's Corner and today we are reviewing from the G.I. Joe classified series the Crimson Guard. Now this guy's been out probably a couple of months now I think. Um, it was it feels quite new though to be honest with you. They did release a retro version as well at the same time. Whether it's out in the UK I'm not too sure but this one I think looks nicer. It's actually got a black face mask on here and it's a bit of a duller red when the other one is brighter red with a silver face mask but to me these guys should have a black face mask on there it comes with tons of accessories got m16 sidearm a saber with its sheath down here backpack as well great illustration down here on the side that goes around to the other side as well with the crimson guard looking up here on the back we've got that collage that we kind of know of these guys here's number 50 in the set number 50 again down here with his kind of uh, attributes on the side there so i guess without further ado let's crack this bad boy open so here he is in his blister pack obviously there's no hidden accessories down here sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't on these guys but you can really see all his knives now and with all that kind of sort of nice silver paint on there so we get him out for our first impressions and uh, as we all know of our gi joes as well got to make sure that these legs are bendy so before i really do the anything of the review I'm just going to check them out and they feel fine they feel good and um yeah it's looking really nice i really like the detail of the cobra logo and um yeah so we're going to go away put it through his paces and we'll see you in a moment So welcome back we've been away of putting through his paces and what can i say about this figure well to be honest he's really really nice he's a really good figure and i think kudos to hasbro they have done a fantastic job i have one very small gripe but we'll get through that as we go for the review um, but apart from that he's a really nice looking guy really cool looking sort of design of this figure uh it's kind of sort of brought it back up a little bit up to date but still keeping that kind of old look about it as well and not change the design too much and especially with the accessories as well there's no extra armor parts and whatnot over the figure we've just got this sort of nice curvature around on the sort of like the boots and the uniform as well so first of all let's just start with this guy's accessories he is absolutely got oodles of accessories all over his body and um, first of all he has this sort of like m16 and as you can see he actually holds it really nicely in both hands here his hands are slightly a little bit kind of hard to get into this sort of grip but once it's in place it's fine you see all the details on here it looks fantastic we've got this kind of baronet on the end it's not removable but it's all painted in the silver look on there as well we can actually take this out of his hand and we can have a closer look at that as well and um, just on that side you can see those details and it's all done in a really nice black plastic as well no stupid grayness or anything here it's done really cool so if you see here we've got a quite a large trigger finger and um, what that does is actually attach to this little knob there on his backpack so you can actually put this there and he can hold it out of the way and use his other weapons Looking at the backpack also, we got the uh, back part around on here, we've got the Cobra logo, we've got some nice kind of sort of like uh, straps and stuff around and you've got this sort of detail down on the side and you've also got that kind of leverette kind of look around on the actual backpack itself which is pretty cool. Here we have another sort of like hole for another accessory which leads on to the next one. So here he has his sabre and we've actually got this kind of nice sheath comes down here and with that we can actually put out the sword and take a closer look at that. So you can see the nice little handle there, got that kind of cobra head kind of sticking out of the top there with the little hook and um, the sort of guard and going into a very nice silvered sabre as well. It's quite, quite firm as well. Um, so there's no warpage at all in the actual uh, packaging, although the actual sheath itself a little bit warped in there so now you can actually put that back in there and this is also on a peg onto the belt which then leads on to if you want it on the belt or you can attach it to the backpack so it's entirely up to you if you think it's sort of in the way there you can have it up here and sometimes it is in the way there so i kind of like the idea that you can have it in both places so let's take that off and that's held into to the uh, back of the figure just on the peg system and as you can see it was actually in there quite firmly and again got more details on the inside of all those sort of straps as well coming down to this side we've got his side gun 
and or handgun should I say that fits into his little holster here on his leg it is in there quite tight but again it's just like a nice detailed on there nice little grip and uh, a few little bits at the top there for extra details as well which is nice and his last accessory he has is a knife in his belt pocket or on another little sheath there on the side and again it's more of a combat kind of style knife and it's very similar to the uh, sort of saber we've got that extra kind of cobra head there at the end looking really cool so yeah oodles of accessories and this guy is just literally full to the rim of them but the good thing about that as well is articulation he can actually get all that kind of uh, best out of the accessories as well so head wise he can turn left right he can look down he can look up it's a little bit hindered because obviously the helmet and that high neck collar that he does have on there as well he's got lower neck movement a little bit of swagger in the head as well got full rotation all the way around at the arm we've got a nice butterfly joint in there as well rotation at the upper bicep also on uh, double hinged with no uh, pegs in there as well which is good rotation at the wrist and they go up and down so you can get that kind of nice gun pivot as well with it and that's on both hands as well got full rotation here at the waist and he's got a crunch that comes all the way down this far and can crunch all the way back up there so he's got a really nice kind of range there but now we're going into the bit that i said at the beginning there's my little sort of gripe about the figure it's just these hips they look kind of ugly it just feels like the legs are kind of plugged don't like pegged on on the side sometimes we have the sort of like crutch area kind of sort of goes over the top of the leg so you don't really see this kind of seam so it actually feels like old gi joe figures from back in the 80s where we've got this kind of sort of like looseness around here so even though it is good articulation in there and they don't hinder but when you start taking pictures and stuff you can't really see it but when he stands up straight i just think they look a little bit odd they do drop down as well which is nice um, I didn't have any problems with this, so there's no stress marks at all, at all in the inside. But the legs can come up all this way, which is fantastic. They can go forward, they can go all the way back as well. And obviously we've got that lower this that actually gives it that extra movement as well. We've got upper fire rotation up here as well. We have a double knee that comes up all the way around as well with no pins. And then we've got a rocker and a pivot at the ankle. And also we have the boot swivel as well, which is really, really cool. So yeah, that is the guy really. It's, it's only these hips that really kind of annoy me. But then we can actually look down the actual figure and actually bring this guy's details to the camera. So yeah, we've got that nice sort of like slightly matte, slightly glossy black mask on there with the nice silver around on the side. And obviously with that kind of nice silver visor as well. Around on the back of the helmet, it's just pure red. Coming down to the back, we can have a look at this first. There's literally nothing really going on there apart from his uniform and overalls. But we've got the kind of rope part that comes around here and that's attached to his sort of like a little, I don't know, sort of general kind of commander things on the shoulders up here. And then we've got his badges, got the other parts around here. They've got the Cobra logo. We've got the badge and the Cobra logo on this side. That This side is plain. And then we've got the stripes around on the arm looking for that really royal sort of uniform as well. Got the V down here, which I think Destro had the V. The belt is quite nice, really nicely detailed as well. Be quite cool to put some extra studs in there at a later point with a bit of silver. Down on the gun, we've got a kind of straps around the leg, very plain compared, although it has got that nice sort of leverette texture that matches the backpack as well. And down on the legs, uh, pretty cool. I mean, they could have changed the colours of this. I wouldn't mind too much if they were black. And then down on the boots, again, with that nice leverette and a few straps and even a silver little bracer down there to hold the buckles together so all in all yeah a really nice looking figure really really good and um, what we can do now we can do some size comparisons so first up for the size comparisons we can bring in the royal guard from the black series and as you can see they do fit very well together but the black series always seems to be a little bit lower in the uh, size comparison there we also got my uh, a crimson guard clone trooper uh, custom there and now i feel like now i've got this guy i can actually look at the details a little bit more and add a little bit more details to this guy which i i may do so at a later date and then on the right hand side we can bring in another gi joe figure so you can see how he sort of compares to flint here um flint just his legs keep wobbling at the moment they're doing a bit of annoyance but um yeah they are similar height and then we bring in spider-man for the last part on here, I'm just going to try and make him stand up straight. I've just been posing him around with a few other figures uh, for more reviews coming a little bit later. But uh, yeah, and there is Spider-Man. So he kind of fall in lines more with the Marvel Legends and the other Hasbro apart from the Black Series where they are a little bit larger. But a little bit of toy photography sort of trickery, we can get away with it. 
So thank you so much for joining me in this one. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this guy. Are you going to pick this guy up? Are you been an umming and ah in, or are you going to start indulging into the GI Joe classified series? Let me know in the comments down below. You can subscribe, ding the bell, follow me on Instagram where you see more pictures of these, and I'll see you next time. Take care.